Hello everyone, I'm Nitin and in this video, I'll be discussing RSA encryption algorithm covering introduction, algorithm stages and a detailed example. So let's get started. We start with the brief history. In 1977, three young scientists, Ronald Rivest, Eddie Shamir and Leonard Edelman of the MIT presented an asymmetric or public key encryption algorithm known as RSA encryption algorithm. Using the first letters of their last names, they derived the name RSA. It uses two different keys, a public key and private key to encrypt and decrypt data. Both the public key and private key can encrypt a message. The opposite key from the one used to encrypt a message is used to decrypt it. Now, what solution it offers? It allows two parties to create secure communications and receivers to verify the origin of a message and the sender's identity. Why it is secure? The security of this algorithm is based upon the integer factorization problem. That means computing prime factors of a large number is very difficult. Let's understand this. In RSA, it is easy to multiply two large prime numbers P and Q to obtain a modulus N, but factoring of that large number N into P and Q is very difficult. Applications. It is one of the most widely used public key encryption algorithms particularly in digital signatures and securing communications such as browsers, VPNs, email systems and messaging systems. We'll explain RSA algorithm into two parts. First, key generation process and second, encryption and decryption process. RSA encryption algorithm uses two different keys, public key E, N and private key D, N, where N is the system modulus used as a common number for both public key and private key. N is obtained from the multiplication of the two selected large prime numbers. E is a public exponent of public key and D is a private exponent of private key. Now let's look at how we generate these keys. The prerequisite for RSA encryption algorithm is basic understanding of modular arithmetic which I have explained in the modular arithmetic video series. We'll explain the key generation process in five steps. In step one, we select two large prime numbers P and Q. It is very crucial for RSA security that two very large prime numbers be generated that are quite far apart. Using these two large prime numbers in step 2 we calculate the system modulus n that is p times q. In step 3 we calculate torsion function phi n of modulus n which is simply the product of p minus 1 and q minus 1. You can learn more about torsion function in my separate video. Why we need this value? So it is required to determine the value of the public exponent e in the next step. In step 4, we select an integer e, which is the public exponent of a public key in RSA. That should satisfy the following two conditions. First, it should be greater than 1 and is smaller than the value of torsion function phi n. And second, should be co-prime of torsion function. That is the GCD of e n torsion function equals 1. In step 5, that is the final step, we calculate the private exponent d of a private key such that it satisfies the following relation e times d mod phi n equals 1 means d should be a multiplicative inverse of e. Now we have got the value of n, e and d to form the public and private key. We can publish the public key and keep the private key secret. Once the RSA keys are generated, encryption and decryption process can be performed. Let's assume RSA keys are generated by the receiver. Then the public key is published means sent it to the sender, whereas the private key is 
kept secret. Let's look at encryption process. The encryption operation is performed using public key and plain text based on the given equation. Now the obtained ciphertext is sent to the receiver and it can be decrypted by the receiver using their private key based on the given equation. This is how we implement RSA encryption algorithm. Let's look at an example to understand the complete RSA encryption algorithm. In step 1, we select two large prime numbers P equals 17 and Q equals 11. Of course, the prime numbers we have selected here are not large prime numbers but will simplify the calculation and easy to understand. In practice, these prime numbers should be very very large. Using these two large prime numbers, in step 2, we calculate the system modulus n that is 17 times 11 equals 187. In step 3, we calculate torsion function phi n of modulus n which is simply the product of 17 minus 1 and 11 minus 1 that is 160. In step 4, we select an integer e which is the public exponent of a public key such that it should satisfy the two condition condition 1 it should be greater than 1 and smaller than the value of torsion function and condition 2 it should be co prime of torsion function that means their gcd is 1 here we have selected e equals 7 which is greater than 1 and smaller than 160 and co prime to 160 meaning their gcd is 1 which we will calculate just after completing these steps and in step 5, that is the final step, we calculate the private exponent d of a private key which is a multiplicative inverse of e and should satisfy the relation e times d mod phi n equals 1. Let's assume d equals 23. How we got it? I will explain in a minute. First, check the above relation 7 times 23 mod 160 equals 1. It has satisfied the inverse relation therefore d equals 23 is correct. Now we can publish the private key and keep the private key pair secret. Wait a minute. We haven't done two calculations here. First the GCD of 167 and second d equals 23 that is the private exponent. We can calculate both values using a single method called extended Euclidean algorithm which will be very efficient. I have also explained extended algorithm in a separate video but we will look at here again in the context of RSA encryption algorithm. Let's do both calculations in order to complete the key generation process. Here we need two values phi n which is 160 and e which is 7. Now we need to calculate the GCD of phi n and e and the value of d. We will perform calculations using the extended Euclidean algorithm into two parts. In part 1 we will find the GCD of two numbers using the standard Euclidean algorithm which is dividend equals quotient times divisor plus remainder. Verify if the GCD is 1 then both numbers are co-prime. In part 2, if both numbers are co-prime then using the extended Euclidean algorithm with Bijou's lemma will find the coefficient d of e that is a multiplicative inverse of e. Once we have got d will verify the relation e times d mod phi n equals 1. So let's start the part 1. Here we have divided 160 by 7 and written in the Euclidean algorithm with their remainder and quotient. But we also need to rearrange the equation to make the remainder 6 as the subject. So we are going to use this rearranged equation for the backward substitution in the extended 
algorithm. The Euclidean algorithm is basically a continual repetition of the division operation for integers until the remainder is zero to find the GCD. But here we are not expecting zero, instead expecting one to prove that two numbers are co-prime. Move on to the next division step and we'll do the same rearrangement of equation in every division step. Here we have got remainder 1, so phi n and e are co-prime. This is very quick because we have chosen small numbers. The value of GCD equals 1 satisfied the required condition to calculate the multiplicative inverse of e. So let's move on to the part 2. The part 2 is the extended algorithm in which we will utilize all the rearranged equations for backward substitution to calculate d as a coefficient of e. We start backward substitution in reverse order with the last GCD equation of the subject 1. I have rewritten the equation and multiplied 1 to 7 in order to make this equation similar to Bijou's lemma for finding coefficient d of e. In the subsequent steps, we will continue backward substitution and substitute the expression for 6, then expand it and obtain the final equation. Here we have calculated the value of d which is the coefficient of e and we can also verify the mod result of e and d which is 1. Thus, we have completed the RSA key generation process and obtained public and private keys. Now we have generated public key and private key so we can perform encryption and decryption using both keys. We are assuming both keys are generated for the receiver here. Then receiver sends public key to sender and kept the private key secret. So let's do the encryption. For encryption we need public key and plain text. Let's assume plain text is 88. This is the encryption formula in which we'll place the values of p, e and n. Now find the mod of this long number which is our ciphertext that is 11. Now the ciphertext is sent to the receiver and it can be decrypted by using the private key based on the given formula in which we'll place the value of c, d and n. Here we can divide the power into smaller powers to simplify our calculations. So 23 is divided into 10 and 13 and we can find individual mods and then the final mod to obtain plain text 88. This is how we perform encryption and decryption using RSA algorithm. This concludes my presentation and thanks for watching my video.